Hello YouTubers, this is the Nubifar, and welcome to a no bullshit rundown of the job of the explorer. This video was a massive undertaking. I tried to be as complete as possible, which obviously takes time and research. If you like this video, please help me by suggesting it to a friend. The Professional Wanderer. Why do humans risk our lives by pushing the edge? It seems to be a natural instinct for our species. We're always willing to launch ourselves into the unknown. Primitive humans explored on foot and then on horses. We made ships to cross the ocean and submarines to search below them. Planes allowed us to search the skies, and eventually rockets let us leave our planet altogether. Let's begin. Above all other jobs, exploration will be the most popular within Star Citizen. I want to first address a question I get all the time. What's going to happen when we discover everything? At the time of commercial launch, there's obviously going to be a finite number of systems and millions of excited explorers in thousands of orgs. So it's easy to think that with numbers like that, we could have the majority of it discovered, scanned, probed, mapped, and cataloged before anyone needs to buy insurance. We've been assured many times on 10 for the Chair that this possible issue has a very simple solution. Discoveries will need to be periodically verified. If everything only required to be scanned once, this game mechanic would be doomed. Jump points initially need to be discovered, surveyed and plotted, but they're planned to be dynamic. Because the universe changes, there's going to be a constant need for exploration. You could technically spend your days doing nothing but keeping tabs on the jump points and then selling the updated data. To make this even more exciting, we were told that a player would actually need to fly the unknown or stale jump point in order to chart them. So, when you commit to charting a jump, there's a risk of being thrown out, damaged, or even killed if you're unable to fly it. To me, this sounds very exciting, but if that puts you off, don't worry, there's always AI pilots and drones. We'll need to see how the drone mechanics are going to be done, but personally, I hope it takes a lot of skill to plot the course. Once the new path is assessed as optimal, the data can be sold so others can perform the jump safely with their navigational computer. Right now, jump points are being classed into three sizes. Some ships are going to be forced to take larger points, which could result in a longer path. Smaller ships are going to get more jump options, so that means that they can optimize their path shorter or safer. Jump points are just one aspect of exploration. Explorers are also looking to find new planets, new destinations, and eventually new species. Information is vital for the industrial types. Miners, farmers, and colonists are going to rely heavily on explorers to find the right place to set up shop. This data could be sold to the government or whoever's willing to pay. The dynamic nature of the universe will also be bolstered with large-scale events and future content drops. Large-scale events mix up the universe with a collective mission for the players to work on. DLC drops will have the potential to expand the universe well into the future to keep the gameplay fresh. The motivating factors for exploration are broad. There are two types of discovery. Discovery for information and discovery for fun. Discovery for information can be broken down into scientific discovery, corporate intelligence, and military intelligence. And of course, these can be further broken down to personal gain and financial gain. So you can see there's a lot of good reasons why you might want to take up a career within exploration. Some humans just want to discover. Being remembered or making your mark in the universe is a real motivation for some people. Even at personal expense, risk of bankruptcy or risk of death. On day one, when the servers go from beta to live release, parts of the universe are going to be known, but only to a point. There will be documented paths, races, and planets. This information is going to be logged in the arc map, but that doesn't mean that we're going to know everything about it. It's up to the explorer to confirm or disprove the rumors. It's no secret, but since 1991, I've been a serving member of Canada's military. I've spent 15 years as an armored crewman in a reconnaissance troop. In-game being part of enemy contact, a mercenary company, I see exploration as a tool. Exploration for the purpose of military intelligence serves to discover key leverage over a group or enemy. This is also called spying or reconnaissance. An example of this would be that you discover where a pirate org is called home. It's now up to you to get some information on its capability, activity, size, and strength. It would be best if you could achieve this without being discovered. It wouldn't hurt to get some kind of positive ID so that you can do some background research. Their bounty may have a very high value and you may have just the team to claim it. This would be intelligence for financial gain. And if you're good at it, people are gonna line up from all over for your services. Exploration for corporate intelligence is basically surveying the act of mapping and scanning the unknown for resources, jump points, and other interesting facts. The goal of corporate exploration is obviously to flip a profit. The information has to be worth more than the expenditure or you're wasting your time. Let's have a look at some ships. Technically, any ship can be used for exploration. Some are better suited than others. Currently, there are 10 ships that specifically list exploration as their primary role. Today, I'm gonna to give you a very brief description of them, but I plan to do a deep dive later once we get some updated game mechanics. The Aurora ES, LX, and the Mustang Beta are your Tier 1 starters. The ES and LX have the most rudimentary systems within this series. 
It looks like the slightly more expensive LX has a leather seat, but they both have a jump capable drive. They're probably an okay value only because they're so inexpensive. Personally, I would suggest that you start a little bit higher up in the price range. The Mustang Beta is head and shoulders over the ES and the LX. It has one of the best canopy views of any ship, an efficient jump drive, and large fuel reserves. The most unique feature is its living quarters. We still need to see what's actually decided about the sleeping, eating, and hygiene mechanics. If you have this ship, you'll always be ready to go. It's a fully equipped Winnebago. The luxurious 315P. The 300 series is currently getting a rework, and I'm hoping that when we see it again, it'll make a little bit more sense than it does now. This is a great ship, but it has no specialized living equipment that sets it apart from any other 300 ship. It does come with a stronger power plant, upgraded sensors, tractor beam, and long range communications. The Reliant Sen. The Reliance Flying Wing failed to impress me since launch. I'm confident that it'll eventually fly well, and with that, this is shaping up to be one of the best cheap explorers. The rear section is like a Mustang Beta, but with room for two and a more complete sensor console. I think this little ship is gonna be great for gameplay with a friend. The Freelancer DUR. Now we're starting to get into a much larger footprint. The DUR variant carries less cargo than a standard, but picks up sensors and longer range. This variant is getting a rework, and I'm very interested to see what the inside looks like. I hope it's a little bit more like a camper inside in keeping with its purpose. The Terrapin is a tough science ship with advanced plating and some very specialized sensors. It's very small and the concept art seems to be lacking in all creature comforts. I'm sure that it'll be good for both, but I see this more geared towards reconnaissance than scientific exploration. The Aquila is the constellation variant that's tricked out to explore. From the outside you'll know it because it trades the square glass for a round observation canopy. The top turret's been replaced by an advanced sensor suite and it comes with a rover and a Merlin. It's a little bit like the best of both worlds because you could run cargo just by ditching the rover. This multi-crew ship is well suited for a group of friends in a small org. The Carrick is a military ship whose sole purpose is exploration. Its computer core is tailored to charting jump points from the drones in the scout. It includes a rover and three modules that will be interchangeable. It's well defended and very well armed. It includes a unique armored shield that can cover the bridge from attack or radiation. It'll have a basic medical bay and workshop for when you're out on your own. And finally, the Endeavour with the telescope module. This science ship has one of the longest range sensor packages in the verse. I would never send this ship into the black without support, but I know it's gonna be an exploration powerhouse. In conclusion, being the explorer, you get to put it all on the line to see the unknown for yourself. When pushing the edge of the known universe, you're gonna to need to manage your consumables, know where to look, and know when to turn back. Thank you so very much for spending your time with me today. If you liked my no bullshit approach, please consider subscribing to help me get the word out about Star Citizen. This video was a bit of a time sink, so I would very much appreciate your help by linking it to a friend or orgmate who's interested in exploration. Fly safe and I'll see you in the verse.